Aegis combat assist activated. Systems green. Welcome citizens. In this video we'll be taking a look at the Aegis Dynamics Eclipse. We'll be going over the stats of the ship, looking at its standard loadout and giving our thoughts on the ship's uses and possible upgrades. As with all things Star Citizen, keep in mind that specific details of the ship could and probably will change over time as the game's development progresses. The Eclipse is Star Citizen's first tactical strike ship which was released as part of the Alpha 3.2 update. It's a stealth bomber which draws design inspiration from the current day Northrop B2 Spirit. In Star Citizen lore, it was used in numerous successful operations by the UEE and is now available to civilian markets. Its aero wing design sees all of its weapons and thrusters housed internally within the hull, making it extremely aerodynamic for atmospheric flight and giving it one of the smallest front and rear cross sections currently available in game. Its cockpit feels very cosy and the low ceiling, while limiting the pilot's view, feels quite aggressive. With a top speed of 195 meters per second, the Eclipse's speed is on par with an Aurora MR, which is a polite way of saying that the ship is slow. Its cruise speed isn't anything to brag about either, which sits at 980 meters per second. The ship's agility is fairly limited too, as it only has eight maneuvering thrusters. Don't expect to be using it for general missions either, as the ship has no cargo space and no access to carry grabby hands items on board with you. To facilitate its intended role, the Eclipse has good operational range thanks to its two small fuel tanks, two quantum fuel tanks and two fuel intakes. Its other main components such as the power plant, cooler and two shield generators are all stealth grade items, meaning that they all run with low EM or IR outputs. The trade-off with these components is that they also run with comparatively low stats too. This gives the Eclipse a shield strength of 2,400 hit points and slim upgrade options. As standard, it comes with a pair of size 2 Scorpion GT215 Gatling guns. While these can tear holes in smaller opponents, they aren't so effective against medium to large targets and you can often find yourself running out of ammo in prolonged engagements. But the Eclipse's crown jewel is its torpedo rack and three size 9 Argos 4 torpedoes. These Argus 4 torps track their target via your opponent's cross section, so they take a fairly long time to lock on. But you can start locking a target from over 30 kilometers away, and when they hit their target, they can do some serious damage. We were able to do some limited testing with the torps and found that small ships are instantly destroyed. Medium ships are severely damaged by one torp and destroyed on the second, and larger targets like the Starfarer pop on the third torp hit. If your target has its shields down, most ships will be destroyed with a single torpedo hit. The massive Reclaimer is an exception to this. It has such a big shield and durable hull, you will need a fleet of Eclipses to take one down, so it's best to save your torpedoes unless you have a dedicated strike team willing to engage one. And therein lies one of the Eclipse's main problems. We estimate it will take three fully stocked Eclipses, giving a total of nine torpedoes to take a Reclaimer down. This is the closest ship we have to capital size in-game currently, so we can use it as our benchmark of sorts. When it was last available for purchase, the Eclipse weighed in at $300. That's $900 worth of ships to bring down the Reclaimer quickly, and it could be 10 times that to take on an Idris. So if you had visions of a squad of Eclipses taking down a capital ship, you might find that to be an expensive dream. Another problem for the ship is usefulness. As its stealth mechanics haven't been fully implemented into the game yet, its only real stealth functions come in the form of its ability to lock onto targets well out of its opponent's range. As for upgrades, the Scorpion GTs could be swapped out for Tarantula GT870 cannons if you want to use the ship at range in a dogfight. 
or for ballistic scatter guns for close range. But really, the Eclipse shouldn't be used in dogfighting at all, and the gun should only be used as a deterrent before a quantum jumps away from danger. As stealth isn't working properly yet, you could swap out the power plant and shield generators for some more powerful versions to aid in survivability. Installing a pair of force wall shield generators can increase your shields by over 1300 points. While the Eclipse is very good at sniping small to medium sized targets from extreme ranges, there isn't much else for it to do in the current build of the game. The Eclipse isn't really a ship for the lone wolf player and will be best purchased in-game using in-game credits by large organisations. Well, that's it for this review. I hope it's been helpful and informative. If you like the vid, leave it a like and subscribe for more Star Citizen videos. Also, feel free to leave any suggestions in the comments for any reviews you would like to see. Bye for now.